And because it is the last Tuesday of the month and because we're feeling kind of wild, Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge joining me via Zoom in the Zoom studio this morning. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Yes, it is feeling a little wild out there, especially with this rain. I'm so excited about the rain. <laughs> Yeah, I, we definitely need it, and we are definitely getting soaked today, and I'm sure your favorite froggy friends love this too, huh? Absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of things that are enjoying the rain this morning because we needed it. I even went out and frolicked in the rain today. I just oh. can't help it. It's such a nice, perfect spring sprinkle. Love it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so this will definitely help things grow. Lots of uh, beautiful early, late spring, early summer flowers out there that we'll get to. Also, babies on the refuge. I'm sure that helps them grow too. Uh, also, uh, it will help. Uh, I know that this month is designated as uh, Wildfire Awareness Month, and uh, we've had some wildfires burning, uh, but also some prescribed burns this time of year that we'll be talking about as well. Also, some of your best spots on the refuge in June. So uh, we'll uh, get to going here this Tuesday morning. Uh, well, first off, let's talk about uh, what is being born. Who is being born on the refuge these days? <laughs> yes, I always think of Memorial Day weekend as a family weekend, and it's hard not to think about it as a wild family <laughs> weekend as well. So um, definitely people are seeing goslings out there. Those uh, um, little, the Canada geese are just everywhere, and it's fun to watch them, um, you know, frolic through the ponds and marshes and stuff, and also ducklings. So there's a lot of broods of ducklings out there that um, are having a heyday as well. So uh, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of that. Now the swans are still sitting on the nest. We haven't seen any, um, any of those uh, signets yet, but I have a feeling that it won't be long before we start seeing some of those signets. And then, of course, um, there are other birds that, um, that are uh, preparing their nests, you know, laying eggs. And um, it's fun to watch some of the um, breeding dances that happen between different species. And, and that's been pretty prevalent. A lot of warblers coming through, of course. And so the bird watching is great. And then in other animals, so like mammals, for example, the fox, we're seeing a few fox kits that are coming up here and there. Um, and even fawns. So people have come across some um, uh, sweet little fawns that are hiding in the grass or uh, shrubs and such. Um, out there as well. So lots of things happening in the little baby world. And <laughs> just a reminder, of course, you know, these animals um, can take care of their own. Sometimes the adults do leave the nest or leave the fawn alone for extended periods of time. It's pretty amazing how long they can go. Um, but they do return. So um, certainly if you find any young animals, uh, best to leave them be. Chances are they will reunite with their adults. Um, there are some cases where, um, you know, if this rainstorm <laughs> was to be a, a breezy one, sometimes nests get blown out of a tree or something like that. And, um, and there has been some success with uh, replacing that nest. So, um, in a little box or something, you can put it back up in the tree. It's good to get those little birds away from dogs and particularly cats that might be out in the neighborhood. Um, so you can do things like that, but uh, for the most part, we ask that people leave the young ones where they were found. Okay, some good advice. And if you see some of these cute little fuzzy things out there, <laughs> leave them be. Yes. Uh, so that's uh, good advice. And it is fun. I d I've seen goslings out uh, in this, the, the water. And what is, it, what is a typical, um, you know, how many goslings do geese typically have? Like, 
a pair of geese? You know, they can, um, usually they start out with a pretty good number. I think seven is pretty common. They can, you know, have more than that, nine, something like that. Um, what's kind of fun to watch is that eventually as these goslings starts, start to grow, those family units combine. So you might have, um, you know, several adults and then all of the young, you know, it's like, oh, once they're old enough, they get to play with their friends. <laughs> so those groups get really big. So you kind of wonder, you know, wow, how many did they really have? But it's probably a combination of those families getting together. So, But even some of those duck broods, I was surprised to see, um, you know, well over 12 little ducklings in a group with some wood ducks. So um, there could be quite a few All right. predators, as you know, so, um, so that they can struggle as they're trying to hide in, um, in the vegetation. That's what makes those marshy um, cattails and uh, the, um, even some of the, um, all those aquatic plants that come with um, keeping those babies hidden <laughs> really <laughs> all right I'm on the line today with Kelly Blackledge always a wild time in the studio with Kelly from the Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge and uh, talking about babies on the refuge also growing on the refuge of course wildflowers you've got a beautiful background today uh, yeah. for folks not watching right now but we will post this <laughs> on our Facebook page following the show uh, but those are some wild do they look like that yet no, <laughs> this, is, this one is a little later in the season, but you know, right now in the spring, we've had those first ephemerals come out. So your hepatica and your little wood anemones, they're so sweet. And now we're starting to see some of the bigger flowers come out. So like um, your, uh, the may flowers, or uh, sometimes people will call them the wild, uh, the wild lily, lily of the valley, you know, um, those are starting to bloom through the woods and, um, and then what's kind of cool is, you know, like bloodroot and ginger, when those leaves come out, they stay kind of curled. And, um, and now they're, they're starting to flatten out. So you can see it, this beautiful ground cover of ginger and bloodroot that pretty unique leaves. The ginger has the heart-shaped leaf and the bloodroot has that funny looking, I don't know, elephant ear like leaf that um that covers the ground as well so other flowers coming up we're seeing in the aquatic areas of course the um marsh marigolds are pretty thick out there now and um that's a yellow flower that's really pretty that's uh coming up cowslip sometimes people call them and then uh the wild calla lily too so watch the edges of the marsh they're pretty short but a little white flower along the edges of the marshes, it's a wild calla lily that comes up. And then we'll start seeing the blue flag iris bloom um, fairly soon here. Uh, and then with this rain, I'm just sure those yellow lady slippers are gonna start popping out too. They, they were starting to come up and just about ready. So they're gonna start coming up. And then, um, you know, through the month, we'll start seeing more stuff start to bloom. So put on, my prediction is that June 15th, the showy lady slippers will start to bloom. <laughs> so this rain is the perfect start. Those shoots are going to start coming up. And a couple weeks later, then, um, you know, they're, they're going to start blooming. So, and the showy or pink lady slippers will start blooming uh, June 15th through the 4th of July. Oh, so okay frame to come out and visit and and see those there's a lot of roadsides around the refuge um out and about around the refuge <laughs> that will um that have great displays of showy lady slippers our state flower i like um going up that shell lake road um you know other highway 37 39 those places are pretty spectacular with uh showy lady slippers as well so sometimes just off the refuge, but there's certainly lots on the refuge. Uh, by the way, those yellow lady slippers that we're going to start seeing, we have both the small lady slipper and the large lady slipper. So there's kind of a, a few phases. Those yellow lady slippers will bloom um, along with the showy lady slippers. So you get a great display of orchids when that's happening. And that's going to be towards the end of June. It's going to be Orchid City. <laughs> and the rain helps. 
strong. And the rain definitely helps. Yep, get those popping out of the ground. I know we're seeing um, some meadow rue. Uh, somebody had asked about um, what that is, and and that's such a dainty little thing that starts coming up. The leaves are super dainty, and um, and it gets to be like close to a foot tall or so. So you can watch for that. So many. Okay. There's just there's a lot. <laughs> All right, yes, and you can drive through the refuge and walk through. You've got some routes. We'll hear more about the best spots on the refuge coming up in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, we're on the line today with Kelly Blackledge from the Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge. Of course, uh, we've talked about babies and wildflowers, and, uh, you know, we've, we've had somewhat of a dry spring, but today it looks like we're getting a good soaking, but also... Uh, you do some wildfire, uh, some prescribed burns, and also wildfires uh, happen uh, naturally too, uh, due to some uh, human influence. <laughs> but we're going to talk about your prescribed burns and why you do them, and also we'll get some of your tips on the best spots of the refuge. But first, Kelly, okay. we have a mystery bird sound today, and we're not going to, we can still have people call in and guess, but we don't have a prize today but you can do it just to uh, for bragging rights today if you if you would like to guess <laughs> yeah and this is one that uh you would hear in the woods uh probably not at your feeders but in the woods um as you're looking for wildflowers or mushrooms <laughs> have you found any mushrooms by the way oh uh you but man it's been not very good. So that's another thing that's really exciting about this rain is is the mushroom factor that's about to occur. <laughs> okay. All right. But getting back to the task at hand, we'll uh, okay. listen to the <laughs> mystery, bird, mystery bird sound. <laughs> Right. Kind of distinctive. So it is. So if you would like to guess, but not win a prize, <laughs> uh, just for bragging rights, 847-1340, 248-847-1340. Uh, we'll get your guess, see if uh, we've got uh, people. Uh, and I guess I didn't even get the answer. You'll have to send me the uh, answer in chat, Kelly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I know exactly what it is. Uh, but we'll take a quick break and we'll be back with our mystery bird and Kelly Blackledge next on HodgePod. 1776 Clothing Company in Wadena salutes the 2020 graduates from our area. Wadena Deer Creek, New York Mills, Otter Tail Central, Hinning Battle Lake, Eulen Hitterdahl, Perham, Frazee Vergas, Detroit Lakes, Park Rapids, Norman County East, Wabin, Minoman, Lake Park Audubon, Pelican Rapids, Underwood, Fergus Falls, and West Central Area. We salute you. 1776 Clothing Company. Stylish, cute, and affordable women's clothing in downtown Wadena. At dreaded time, you open your mailbox and your insurance premium is due. Hi, this is Jim Matter at Farmers Insurance. Whether you need home, auto, business, or life insurance, call me at 847-4409. If insurance matters to you, come see me, Jim Matter. And remember, if I can't save you money on your premium, I'll buy you lunch. That's 847-4409. We are farmers. Bum, ba -da, bum, 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 bum. Now. Back to HodgePodge with Kara McCarthy on KDLM Detroit Lakes. Right now, the task at hand, <laughs> the wild studio situation with Kelly Blackledge continues uh, in the studio with me this morning, the Zoom studio, and of course, Kelly from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge. Before the break, we heard our mystery bird sound, and I have heard this bird, but I was thinking it was something else. Um, and we didn't get any calls for guessing okay. for bragging rights, so you can go right ahead. Right. So there are a couple of birds that sound kind of similar. This one we often hear earlier in the spring, it seems like. This one is called the wood thrush. So um, we get a, a thrush of 
wood thrushes <laughs> coming through. And what's cool about the sound of this bird is that um, this bird, uh, and by the way, it sounds like the veery. Sometimes that can be confused. Later in the summer, we're going to hear a lot of veery sounds in the woods. But in the spring, when we hear this, oftentimes, is, if it's the first time you've heard it, like that, that swirly sound is um, the wood thrush. And wood thrush, um, what's cool is that they have a larynx that actually splits. And this bird is, is able to sing out both of those, <laughs> those um, vocal cords, basically. So at the same time, that makes that kind of fluty, neat sound. Um, so yeah, pretty amazing that they can do that. It's like this double song coming out of their mouth, which is just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that pretty? That is beautiful. I guess if you could uh, play two flutes at the same time, it'd be like that. <laughs> sounds like trilling. I remember my <laughs> band director, that sounds a trill. That's a trill, Kelly. Did you ever play an instrument in school? I I did, but I wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to the trailing. <laughs> I didn't get that far. <laughs> All right. So our mystery bird today is a wood thrush, and you will hear it likely, like you said, if you're out hunting for mushrooms or wild berries. So, yes, um, of course, we're going to start seeing mushrooms come up, and you can collect mushrooms on the refuge. So we do allow the collection of nuts, berries, and mushroom for personal use. Just a reminder that um, only the areas south of Highway 26, that southern part of the refuge, is open. You don't have to stay on trails and that kind of thing. You can go through the woods where you think there's going to be a nice stash of mushrooms popping up. Um, but do say stay south of Highway 26. That's the area that's open for mushroom hunting. All right. Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge joins me in the studio. She does every last Tuesday of the month, typically. Uh, tell us what's going on on uh, the refuge. Uh, good to kind of a birthing time, lots of babies uh, on the refuge. Uh, and uh, we've got wildflowers and wood thrushes and let's talk a little bit about wild and fire wood ticks. <laughs> and wood ticks lots of wood ticks you guys well i suppose chickens aren't uh, native to no. <laughs> native to minnesota but they no. eat wood ticks what other varmints eat wood ticks there's something else like uh, a varmint well what they say possum eat possum. wood ticks uh you know, I don't know. <laughs> we don't have possum up this far. Okay. North. Yeah. So yeah, that would. So um, just so if you do go mushroom hunting, I highly, highly recommend that you at least put on knee high rubber boots. That's going to help a lot. It's not going to be the end all, but you're really going to see a lot less ticks on you if you have knee high rubber boots on. Um, or at minimum, tuck your your pant legs into your socks so that those ticks stay on the outside of your body and see a tick, give it a flick, right? <laughs> so. Wow, that's a good one. I haven't heard that one, Kelly. <laughs> so, yeah, you, um, yeah, it can be, you know, so, I mean, you can spray and stuff, but really, I mean, um, and then, of course, when you're done mushroom hunting, really diligent about checking for ticks when you get home. Um, throw your clothes into the dryer on hot for at least 10, 15 minutes. Um, that'll help get the ticks off your clothes because sometimes you're like, ah, throw these jeans in the laundry and then you, you know, or, or you go to wear them the next day and you're like covered in ticks wondering <laughs> where they came from. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yep, they need to uh, be rid of ticks. So do beware of that. Be diligent about checking. You know, there it, you can still have fun outside, even though there's ticks there. Just, just need to, you know, check for ticks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's talk about uh, something that happens every year too. In uh, doesn't does it happen every year? Maybe I should ask. But uh, you you do prescribe burns um, to help things grow 
Enter is that what it is used for? <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, you know, how does that work? And do you have do you follow a plan? You know, um, so it's not the whole refuge that's on fire, but you pick areas, certain areas every year. Absolutely. So there are very targeted areas that um, are. Uh, where we need fire to keep healthy habitats in there. Uh, last year, we did a burn just um, off of 126, if you're familiar with Evans Lake or but kind of by the old job core area in that vicinity. Um, we, we did a burn there, and that's really, that's a very grassy area. So it was um, to try to keep the shrubs from coming up, some of those um, uh, shrubs that, you know, we get a lot of um, species that move into a site when you're trying to keep a, a nice grassy area. So that'll um, keep those uh, plants down as well as some of those cool season grasses. So we have more of those native wildflowers coming up. So it does look like what you see behind me here if you're looking online. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so some of those more healthy plants that are much more beneficial for wildlife. So um, we also do some burns in the woods. Um, there are some areas, particularly we have on docket, some areas that will be great for regenerating jack pine and they do need fire to be able to seed. So those pine cones that are on the ground, the jack pine cones need fire to be able to really open up and germinate. Um, so and there's a lot of areas that, again, we're just trying to keep back some of those invasive plants and fire is a great way to do that um, and keep those habitats healthy. So you're going to see uh, some prescribed burns out in the Detroit Lakes Wetland Management District throughout the county, um, as well as Otter Tail. You know, a lot of folks are, as long as the conditions are right. So we might not see a prescribed burn on Tamarack Refuge. Um, the conditions have to be uh, just right for it to be a safe burn. So the wind, the moisture in the air, all of those are taken into account before a prescribed burn happens, enough staff available, those kind of things. Okay, all right, uh, that's good to know. So, but if, you know, if people see burning and smoke uh their typical response is to call it in but that's fine but you do you already are notifying the area authorities that uh, you are in fact doing a prescribed burn so I guess yeah sometimes there are uh, wildfires that happen that you know people out in the field will be you know or driving about will be the first ones to see it so um so it's you know if you don't see staff around it <laughs> Uh, and a prescribed burn, you're probably going to see a lot of staff out there around it. Um, uh, yeah, call it in. And we do have uh, folks uh, with the DNR that are staffing for wildfires. So, All right. Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge in the studio with me this morning. And this is the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, best spots on the refuge in June. What are your picks? Yeah, so I there are a few places, you know, there's some trails that you can go hiking and you don't see a lot of the really cool wildflowers. So, um, so there's a few spots that I feel like you can, it's a great trail to, to really see some of those neat blooms. And one of those spots uh, you might not think about, but it's actually the woodpecker trail on the wildlife drive. So at stop number five on the wildlife drive, there's this tiny little path that goes up to the observation platform. And on that path, you can see into the woods a little ways and the wildflowers in there can be pretty neat uh, this time of year. It's a, it's a mowed path, so, <clears throat> you, um, so it's easy hiking in that spot. So that's kind of a neat spot to visit. Um, another spot, you know, along the uh, North Country Trail, if you can get on a section of the North Country Trail, you're also going to see some, <clears throat> excuse me, some pretty neat things. Um, so where the North Country Trail crosses the Wildlife Drive, right at the entrance of the wildlife drive, not far before you even get to Blackbird Lake. When you head, so usually I tell people to head to the east so you get to the control structure, but if you head west, um, kind of towards the visitor center, um, you might not have tried that before. A lot of people head east, but if you head west, again, you're gonna see some of those really cool wildflowers that, um, <clears throat> that you don't see in other areas on other trails. So another, 
cool spot right there in June. I love visiting those spots. <laughs> All right. Very good. And always you can just take in a breath of the freshest air in Becker County. Yeah. <laughs> at Tamarack National Wildlife Park. It's going to be sweet smelling now, too. I just love this time of year where everything oh, yeah. is just so fresh and exciting. Of course, you know what else brings, <clears throat> excuse me, rain is mosquitoes. Start to see um, those in, in some spots. The, you know, the other part, I, I, the other spot I really like going is that um, bridge off of 400th Avenue, um, highway uh, which is also the north country trail and going out there because the ferns are starting to pop up so mm -hmm. they're super thick so if you spray for mosquitoes you know the deer flies aren't out yet so if you spray for mosquitoes and you start hiking down there beautiful oh it's so lush when all of those ferns and stuff come out so another great spot in all right kelly we gotta wrap it up pretty quick here uh but uh thank you so much for speaking with us today and sharing this information get outdoors and head to tamrac 